Hey up everybody, Magpie Gaming here and in this video I'm going to give you my first impressions of Fear the Wolves and first impressions aren't that great. It's okay but obviously this is a closed beta, it's due to go into early access very soon so there's a lot of ground for this game to cover at the moment. I've played couple of hours of the game all together and there are a lot more negatives than there are positives at the moment but obviously they say that they're going to start patching out things very soon and hopefully this game will gain ground and start to become something fairly decent. So I'm going to go through the negatives at the moment because to be honest there's more of those than there is positives right now. So when you get into the game the uh, actual character movement is very very spongy. It doesn't feel 100% sharp, it doesn't feel massively responsive. I think that needs to be tightened up a little bit to give it a little bit more pop when you're playing with your character. Um, there's no in-game sound menu. This was one that annoyed me because this, I found the sound in-game very, very loud. But that is probably my setup rather than the actual game itself. So there are no options there to do anything with regards to sound. So you've got the... Uh, there's the graphics options which are very limited right now. You're limited to your actual... Um, to your resolution and to your in your overall graphics quality not really anything else that you can play with there at the moment the gameplay menu I'm not sure what the gameplay menu is going to include but that is another menu that's grayed out the same as the sound so you can't use that one and then there's your control menu which is fairly basic so yeah it's not looking too great it's it seems really buggy in game when you're approaching people or when they're approaching you they can't hear you there are no audible footsteps at the moment doors don't make any sound when you're opening and closing them so of course that doesn't give away your position but again doesn't give away the enemy's position so you're forever turning very quickly and looking all around because you don't know when you're going to get caught by someone um the in-game lobby, that's another one that's bugged. All you can hear is your footsteps. You can't hear anybody else. So if someone's stood punching, you don't hear that. If you're stood punching somebody else, you don't hear that. Matchmaking seems to be okay, though. That seems to work very quickly and is quite smooth. I haven't experienced any issues there with the matchmaking, so that seems okay. When you're flying over the map, up until when the players deploy, that seems very smooth. I get amazing frame rates at that on that uh, part of the game. But as soon as people start to deploy, it gets very jerky and buggy. It's not a smooth experience at all. Like I say, the in-game menu is very, very basic. When you go to quit the game, it, it looks like a five-year-old drew some of the menu systems. And for me, putting a little bit of graphics on your menus, it's no hardship, really. So I would have expected better at that point. But I'm sure that's something that will come along as the game progresses. The inventory in-game isn't very intuitive. I don't like it at all. It's down in the bottom right of the screen. So you've got to go right down to the bottom of the screen rather than it opening up in the center of your screen to give you more to look at you know make it more accessible it's down at the bottom and i don't really like the look of it it's not very good to look at at all the only thing that i do like about the inventory is that when you hover your mouse over one of the weapons it gives you a distance to damage ratio for that weapon which is a quite nice little touch not something you get in many other games so i like that but overall the inventory i don't like it i think it needs a lot of work as well some of the ambient sounds that you get whilst you're playing the game and of course the, the ambient sounds are really all that you've got to go on in this game, nothing else. Character sounds don't seem to be working within the game. That could just be my version of the game, I'm not sure if that's indicative for everybody but it, it just doesn't seem to fit. The ambient sounds, you can hear monkeys and you're in an Eastern European forest next to, next to Chernobyl. I don't understand why I would be hearing what really does sound like monkeys and the, the sound effects sound like they're from a jungle rather than from a forest so it doesn't really fit with the visual that you're getting on the screen other ambient sounds are quite good though you get like these sweeping sounds coming through some of them were freaking me out a little bit and, and they was making me turn and look in certain directions thinking that maybe somebody was you know something was approaching me so they're not too bad but Again, they do need a fair bit of work. So what did I like about the game? Well, the graphics aren't too bad. 
considering that this game is in such an early stage the graphics aren't too bad at all of course there are limited options to play with the graphics but i bumped mine up to 1440p and yeah they look pretty good you know this is using unreal engine so that's a bonus for a start you know that it's a very optimized engine obviously this game needs some optimization going forward but it's got a good foundation graphics wise going forward so i'm quite happy with that spectator mode is quite good once you die you can spectate any of the other living people on the map you can swap between them and I quite like that option. The only thing that I don't like is it lists everybody that's on the server. Those that are alive, the name is in bright white, and those that are dead are greyed out. I think those that are dead should just be removed from the list, and then you're not having to scroll through a massive list of names to find the next person that's alive that you want to spectate. Those that are dead should just be moved out of it. There's no reason for them to be left there. But I do like the spectator mode. It also has a weather voting system, so whilst you're spectating, there will be a countdown in the corner. I think it's around two minutes long, and then you get to vote on what weather is put on the map for the players that are left and you get to choose between rain a storm and fog obviously the one with the most votes wins and that weather is applied to the map so i quite like that that's a nice little touch you're also able to give players a thumbs up while you're expectating them now i don't know if that gives them any kind of in-game uh, advantage does that give them extra points at the end of a round i'm not too sure but yeah this has another thing with the game is the map is huge that's a bonus in my eyes it's 25 kilometers square so it's quite bigger than what we see from the likes of PUBG so there's a lot of ground to cover you do have vehicles to use there are some jeeps here and there I found using the jeeps very buggy though there was a lot of lag issues while I was playing with the jeeps now that could just be my uh, that could be just my experience with them i have done tests on my internet connection when i was getting lag on the servers and my internet connection was fine so i could only assume that it was a server side thing but again it would just gone into open beta there was obviously a lot of people had jumped on very very quickly so it the servers might have been struggling a little bit but the lag did seem to calm down and it got a lot better when i went riding one of the vehicles so I'm not sure why that is but yeah there was a bit of lag but it seemed to disappear after a while but the map is huge and as you're playing through certain sections of the map will become orange with orange lines on and it goes in blocks it, rather than a closing circle you get closing blocks coming around and obviously if you're in these blocks it starts to affect your health and then these orange blocks will turn to red and then they will turn to a solid red and obviously when they're solid red you don't want to be in those areas and this eventually pushes everybody into a certain area of the map now the couple of games that i've played it's pushed everybody into the middle of the map so if when you're joining the game if you land in the middle you tend to be quite safe until the end and you can camp so whether this is something that actually does move around and i've just been fortunate to get into games where it's always been in the middle i don't know i'm assuming that it, it does move around if it doesn't then it should otherwise what's the point you could just land in the middle and camp there so yeah there are some good points for this game you know i like the voting system for the weather i like the spectator mode although the spectator mode is open to abuse really is open to abuse you could sit there giving you know details of where somebody is to somebody else that you know is in the game so but i do like the spectator mode it is good the weather voting system is good you're able to give people a like which is good the graphics are okay some of the ambient sounds aren't too bad and the overall message is that this game just needs a fair bit of work the potential is there definitely now i've been reading some comments on various places on, on their official forums on reddit things like that some people are saying it's a cash grab with bought assets yeah it's got bought assets you know everything's a bit samey within the game but then PUBG was so and it still is but you know the thing that i worry about with games like this is that the battle royale genre is very very crowded and it is only going to get more crowded as time goes on every developer seems to want a piece of the battle royale pie and you know why not you know battle royale jumped up in popularity almost overnight in terms of gaming you know PUBG took the world by storm fortnite saw that and thought i want a bit of that they came along seemingly did things a lot better than PUBG did and took the crown from them and now you've got big hitters such as battlefield and call of duty you've got a, a ton more of games made by indie developers that want to bring battle royale games out you arguably already had games out there that kind of had battle royale modes and they're now tweaking those so 
yeah, it's going to become a crowded market. And the thing that I worry about for this game is that it doesn't have that unique selling point to make it stand out against the others. I like the setting. I like the fact that it's from the, some of the devs from the Stalker series because I like the setting of the Stalker series. I like that kind of, you know, the old Russian kind of aesthetic that you get in the games with them. But I worry that it just doesn't have anything that makes it stand out from the crowd. It's got mutant wolves, but... You know, that's not going to sell this game and keep it going. It's got a weather voting system, which is good, but that's not unique in itself enough to sell this game to a lot of people. So I do worry for its future, but the devs seem very committed. They've already emailed out to say, you know, they've given us a, a kind of rough list of what they're looking to fix within the game going forward so they say that they're going to be fixing the issue with the scope aim in spectator mode which is one thing when a guy when the spectator is watching somebody and that person aims down the scope you don't get to see what they're aiming at you just get to see the gun with the scope and you can't see anything else motion blur is going to be disabled within the game that is it's big in the game motion blur and you know we should have the option to turn it on or off they're going to increase the smg damage there's going to be several fixes of broken extra action points and fixes to many of the crashes that reported. Now this email was sent yesterday literally about six to seven hours after the game had gone live so they'd already been reading some of the feedback that they were getting and looked at the things that they needed to fix and quickly. So to me that says that the devs are very much committed to this game and we're just gonna have to wait and see where it goes. Will it make it in a crowded market? As I say I don't know. It needs that unique thing to keep it going and the issue with these smaller developers is that it's going to be very hard to stand out and it's going to be harder to stand out when you have the likes of Call of Duty and Battlefield releasing Battle Royale modes. You know, these games are big hitters and they can release these modes and not really give a shit whether they work or not because they're the huge games and people will flock to it inevitably. So studios like this need to get themselves out there. They need to stand up and shout and say, you know, look, come and look at me. Come and look at my game. It's got this, this and this. So you you have to stand out very very quickly in this market at the moment. I worry that this game doesn't enough but with the right amount of love and care I think it could do. So we'll just have to wait and see. I'm going to stick with this game though. I'm going to be doing videos on the updates and to the patch notes and things like that and we'll see where it progresses. Now it goes into early access on the 18th which is just a few days away. I'm not actually sure if it's free to play. The Fostop games currently curate another game, Severian, which is free to play. I'm not sure if this one will be free to play or whether there will be a price tag on it. I've got no information on that at the moment. I would think that the best option would be to go free to play. Support yourselves with cosmetic items and see how it goes. But yeah. That is pretty much my first impressions of the game. I must stress again that it's very, very early days for this game. So there is a lot of broken shit in there. And there is a lot of room for improvement, but I'm sure that these guys will get it up to speed eventually. Like I say, they've got a good foundation. The graphics are good. Unreal Engine is an easy one to work with. It's what a lot of the main you know battle royales go with. So there's a there's scope for improvement with graphics, definitely. But it's got a good foundation. It also uses an easy anti-cheat off the bat. So again, you know that a lot of games out there don't really go into how they tackle cheats. This one is putting its hands up and going, this is what we're using from the bat. So it's got a good plus there with the easy anti-cheat in included from the start. So yeah. That's my first impressions of Fear the Wolves. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Did you get a key for this to play the closed beta? I actually thought the closed beta had been cancelled. They did sign ups for the closed beta and then they um, announced that they were going to go to early access on the 18th of this month. So I thought, oh, maybe they've just scrapped the beta. They're going straight to early access, but apparently not. The beta, as far as I know, is going to run up to early access starting. So yeah, there'll be a lot of other people out there putting videos out and giving their opinion on this and showing showing you more gameplay than what I've been able to show you at the moment. But if you didn't get a key, don't worry too much, you aren't missing a great deal right now. Hopefully in a few days time when it goes to early access, it will be fixed a little bit more than what it is right now. So as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching and listening. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.